Beyond Meats reported their third quarter earnings. They reported a net loss of $0.28 cents a share compared to the analyst estimate of $0.05, cents, and their revenue was $94 million compared to the analyst estimate of $132 million. The company said COVID was the reason for the weak numbers. Let's look at this company a little closer to figure out whether it's a buy or a sell. Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day to 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Beyond Meat stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios to determine if they're a buy or a sell. Beyond Meat is a producer of plant-based meat substitutes. The company was founded in 2009. Its products are designed to emulate chicken, beef, and pork. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, market cap 7.8 billion. They're trading at 124.74 a share and they have 63 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows, then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see this company has negative free cash flow and it seems to be getting worse each year because they're a young company, they have a lot of expenses, so they're investing back into their business to grow it. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement, it's revenue minus expenses. They also have negative net income every year. Revenue is a sales for the company. You can see it doubles from 2016 to 2017, that almost triples to 2018, then more than triples in 2019, so they're growing at a pretty rapid pace. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. In 2019, now it's $300 million. The cost of revenue was $198 million. These are the expenses that are directly related to making the company's products. So their gross profit was $100 million. Their operating expenses were $95 million, so they only had a small gross profit of $4.4 million. But that's a good sign because in the prior years, they had negative operating income. They also have to pay interest on their debt and they have some other expenses, so that brought their net income to negative. It doesn't look like it's gonna to be too long until the company starts to turn a profit. This is the company's revenues broken out different ways. The top of this chart is the revenue broken out by fresh and frozen. So you can see fresh grew quite a bit from 18 million to 306 million. That's their focus. And the frozen actually decreased from 20 million to 17.7 .7 million. In 2017, their retail was 25 million, their restaurant and food service was 7 million. So you can see retail, they were doing much more business. But if you fast forward to 2019, it's almost even. This is the company's statement of cash flows. And the way you calculate free cash flow, it's cash flow from operations, which is on the top, minus capital expenditures. CapEx are investments in property, plant, and equipment. So the company did have negative free cash flow every year. But they're a growing business, so this is what you can expect when you're trying to grow your business and make it bigger. You need to invest back into your business through marketing, through payroll, and other ways. Also, you can see on the statement of cash flows, issuance of capital stock. Capital stock is the amount of common and preferred stock a company can issue, and that number keeps growing every year, so they're diluting their current shareholders. But this is what you have to do to grow your business. You need money, either through debt or equity. Let's look at the capital structure. $31 million of debt, $384 million of equity. They pay about 10% interest on their debt, and only 8% of their capital structure is debt, which means 92% is equity, and cost of equity is 8.69%. And to calculate cost of equity, we use a capital asset pricing model. And part of the CAPM formula is the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And their beta is 0.83, so the stock moves less than the market, so it's less volatile than the market. And their WAC is 8.78%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 13 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $9.3 billion. We divide that by 63 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 149. They're trading at 125, so they're trading at a 16% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply, Wall Street values them at about 120, so they're saying the stock is overvalued. They're saying it's a sell. To run a discounted cash flow model, 
you look at the prior financial information and then extrapolate that out into the future. If I did that with a normal discounted cash flow model, the value would be negative because they report negative free cash flow and negative net income. And you can't have a negative stock price. The way I valued this company is I looked at what the average analyst estimated for their future free cash flows. And then I looked at their financials and their competitors' financials and adjusted the analyst free cash flows as I saw fit. And that's how I came up with my valuation. You can see the company IPO'd in 2019 and a stock was driven up after a few months to well over $200. It came back down quite a bit. It looks like it almost touched $200 recently, but it's been on a steady downhill slide for the past few months. So it looks like it could be a really good value because I think this company is going to be doing well when things get back to normal. This company has never paid a dividend before. If you invested $10,000 when this company IPO'd in May 2019, you'd have almost $19,000 today. That's a 90% return on investment. Dunkin Donuts sells the Beyond Sausage Sandwich in over 9,000 stores. They did a test in the Manhattan store in July 2019 and it went really well so they rolled it out to a lot of other stores. Beyond Meat is working with McDonald's to make a McPlant burger. But I do not believe McDonald's will mention Beyond Meat in the name like Dunkin Donuts does. It's also not clear to me if McDonald's will give any credit to Beyond Meat, but we'll find out in the near future. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average P.E. in the market is 15.1, the median is 14.8. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have a negative P.E. ratio. The average price to sales ratio is 5.2, the median is 2.1. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 26.2, so they're doing much worse than the median and average. The average price to book is 4.7, the median is 2.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 20.3, so they're also doing much worse than the median and average. The average interest coverage ratio is 12.3, the median is 3.8. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can just barely cover their interest payments, but I expect this ratio to improve a lot in the next two to three years. The average ROE is 11%, the median is 12%, ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. The average current ratio is 1.8, the median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can easily cover their current liabilities. Their current assets are 275 million of cash, 40 million of receivables, 81 million of inventory. Generally, you don't want to see a current ratio above two. In their case, they need a lot of cash on hand to run the business because they're still operating at a negative. Their free cash flow in 2019 was negative $73 million. So they can last almost four years just with the cash they have on their balance sheet. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Conagra, General Mills, Hormel, Kellogg, Kraft, and Simply Good Foods, all in the same industry as Beyond Meat. And if Beyond Meat has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE and price to sales and price to book. They do have the highest current ratio of all the companies. They're much lower in debt than average. Average is 37%, they're only 8%, so they have a lot of room to borrow. Their market cap is lower than average, and they don't pay a dividend. Most companies in this industry do pay a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 16% discount because I see amazing growth for this company when COVID passes. Their ratios and financials look a bit weak. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.